From the Schmoes No Network Studios in Los Angeles, California, it's the debut of Marvel News from Marvel fans. And now, here are your hosts, Meredith Blacko, Matt Cook, and the real-life Doctor Strange, Matt Key. <laughs> oh, the real-life Doctor Strange, I'll take that. Yeah! Yeah! I am the Sorcerer Supreme. Uh, welcome to uh, Marvel News from Marvel fans. Uh, I am Matt Key. Uh, I'm Meredith Placco. And I'm Matt Cook. Uh, welcome to the very first episode of Marvel News from Marvel fans. Schmoville, how are you? Yeah, hi Schmoville. It's really exciting to be here. And if you want to hit us up on the internet, find us on Twitter. You can hashtag us Marvel News and mar- hashtag Schmoes Knows. And we will answer all your questions yeah. after the show. That's right. Because you'll notice we're not live yeah. at the moment. Well, not not right now. Yes, but this is exciting. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, for, since this is the very first episode, we thought we would introduce ourselves to everyone. Uh, I am Matt Key. Uh, I've been on the Schmoes before. I'm the resident comic book expert. Uh, that more or less just means that I know more about comic books than the other Schmoes. I don't know that I'm that much of an expert, but I know more, more <laughs> than them. So I'm an expert there. Uh, I'm over at Groundlings. I'm in the Sunday Company currently, and I've been reading comic books since I was a small child. Here's an assortment of stuff that I have that I brought for you and toys. Uh, and that's that's uh, that's me, I guess. Uh, Meredith, you want to tell us about you? I mean, I'm just a little, little nerd girl who likes to talk about comics. I'm, I'm just a, a giant Marvel fan. Ever since my dad put my very first comic book in my hand, it was uh, Uncanny X-Men issue 244. I was obsessed with Jubilee from the animated series. And he's like, well, I've been reading comics, so I want to get you a, a present. So he got me that, and I just st- tore into them. And in fact, the first comic I ever bought with my own lunch money was Wolverine number one. It's a good uh, one. It is. It's a it's really a good, good one. one. So yeah, so I'm just, I'm just a, a crazy fangirl who got this great opportunity to talk about comics. Uh, outside of this, I, uh, I'm a news producer and uh, talk show host. So I've worked with NBC and CNN on the back end of things. And I've hosted uh, one of the very first nationally syndicated talk shows about cool things like comics called Radio Sci-Fi back in the day. You might and have heard uh, we were talking earlier, you're up for a couple news uh, Emmys. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Wow. Yeah, they're, t- they're team, they're group efforts. But yeah, I know some, before I left my job, I uh, I did have uh, some stories I worked on. So I'm pretty, pretty excited. So I just want to say go NBC Southeast. You got this. You got this. <laughs> To all my friends, yeah. still there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of first comics, uh, Infinity Gauntlet was one of my first comics. Like, like what an introduction to Marvel, right? Like, wow. Yeah, that's a good one to start with. I was like, what is this? What is massive. this guy? Yeah. And then uh, I don't know what my first comic was. I don't remember. I just I know that I had a bunch of them. You were born go, with comics in your hands. Yeah, pretty much. My well, I remember my first big. Hi, I'm Matt Cook. I'll do that first. <laughs> and then my first big like Marvel thing was uh, my brother and I had a VHS tape of Pride of the X Men that we watched non-stop. Do you know it? No. You don't know Pride of the X-Men? No. Anybody out there that knows Pride of the X-Men, it was uh, supposed to be like the new X-Men cartoon. It was before Fox put on their X-Men cartoon that that I grew up on, but it was a one-off cartoon series called Pride of the X-Men that introduced Kitty Pride of the X-Men. Wolverine was Australian. Uh, It was basically the... uh, uh, you don't well it's part of these guys but it's like yeah. giant size x-men mm-hmm. but it's basically that roster uh and it was incredible well was they like were that this, was a roster in the 80s like exactly so that's when it was made and it was this vhs that my brother and i we like wore down we watched it so many times and uh it was awesome and then i started buying comics and cards and uh i've been doing it ever since yeah yeah we're dorks yeah, just a bit. But yeah, we are, we're just really giant fans who, you know, like everyone here listening and watching our show here on the Schmoville Network, uh, you know, we just love what we do. And uh, we do want to say, like, you know, we might screw up from time to time. We yeah. might get some facts wrong. I will not. Okay, I will. Ever. I will. Cook is infallible. Yeah. You'll right. learn that about him. Yeah. That's actually, he's our fact checker. But, yeah. uh, but we... And some- you guys didn't know this, but Spider-Man was originally a woman. What? Yeah, and and created in 1993, and those what? are all true facts. <laughs> wow, you you heard it here first, yeah. everyone. Schmo's exclusive on so, wow. the, the, the true that, history. Is that what the Spider- true history of Spider Man? Yeah, the yeah. new Spider Man movie is going to be about. Uh, yeah. Well, they're going to reboot it. They, they've oh. actually re, they're doing a reboot from the Andrew Garfield one, and they've currently rebooted that reboot. 
So the reboot that has not yet been made is currently undergoing a new reboot uh, because Spider Man they got to get it. They got to get his origin story out there. They've yeah, never been no, able no, to no, no one's ever heard the origin story. The origin story of Spider Man <laughs> in any of the films. It's so important to do that because nobody knows that he was a teenager that was bit by a radioactive spider. So yeah. they should take three hours to explain that. You know yeah. what I mean? Because they haven't done that yet. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about. Ah, uh, we'll get into it. <laughs> uh, speaking of getting into it. News. Should we get yeah. into it? We want to get into yeah, the news? I think we've yeah. got some, some pretty cool news Let's this week. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, uh, He's on Facebook. Yeah, I know. He's just... I was making sure the fans had stuff to say. I was seeing what they were saying. I'm sorry. You don't be sorry. Uh, uh, so Guardians of the Galaxy broke uh, 600 million this week. Uh, worldwide. Worldwide. Yeah. Uh, which it's doing 300 million domestic, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is... I think like a, a big point of pride for all of us nerds who were like... Everyone's like, Guardians of the Galaxy? What is this? And... All of those of us who knew were like, oh my God, like it's going to blow everything else out of the water. You guys don't even know. Yeah. And now it blew everything out of the water and no one knew. See, I was we I did. was like kind of like, okay, so while I am a huge X-Men fan, sometimes outside of the Marvel Universe, I haven't read a whole lot. So Guardians is not a, a really, Avengers and Guardians I never got into. So you were one of the people so, that didn't know. Yeah, I was kind of like, what is this? How are they going to do? When they first announced it, I was like, what are they doing? A CGI movie? Because I thought it was going to be full CGI animation. I'm like, how is that going to fit into the Marvel Cinematic Universe? And, and I was like, this, oh, come on, a, a raccoon, a tree? How is that going to happen? And I, I saw it and I was like, this is the best Marvel Scene. It's so good. It is amazing. It's so good. And I love it. I, I I got really excited when they announced it because I thought that it gave them license to to do some more stuff. And I, and I like the idea that such a, a distant group of characters, basically from the Marvel Universe, has been brought so hard into the mainstream. And in the movie itself, they do some like massive comic booky moments. Like, oh yeah. Like kind of ridiculous massive comic book things and they do it really well and for me and i've had a lot of issues with a lot of comic book movies because i think they well you're opinionated i'm i'm opinionated yeah. but i think what guardians did so well was show that you can make a comic book movie a really great movie yeah. you know what i mean and i think that's where some films fail so like we have to make this comic book film a comic book film and it's like well no, like comic books have been around for decades because they have such intense human elements and it's so important that you get that stuff right. And Guardians, which is a ridiculous cast of characters and yeah. creatures and locations, it focuses on the character. And I think that's why it's doing so well is because yeah. it's an actual story and it's something that people can get into. And I love that it's being rewarded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and what's fun about it is that it focuses on the character, like you're saying, but it focuses on the characters inside of the dynamics of the team and yeah. how they interact with one another and everything else. And they just so happen to be traveling into the severed head of an ancient celestial being right. like that's just don't pay attention to that like yeah let's focus on this core group and the, dyna- the dynamic that they have with each other and that's just yeah and when the dynamics done so well you're like oh yeah I, there's totally a giant floating head in space that you yeah. can gamble inside of yeah like, you don't pay attention to that stuff you don't get like wait wait wait, what's happening here it's like, you buy no, it those guys buy it so i buy it yeah and that's so cool yeah, I just one of my favorite things about that film was just the the cast, as we we've mentioned. But I just love the interaction, and how fun it was. Like yeah. it's been a while since I had like Avengers was it was a great action movie. Yeah. Uh, Cap two was great, you know, almost like a spy thriller. But but Galaxy was just or Guardians was just a fun superhero team up. It was yeah, I agree with that. Sorry, mm-hmm. and I think what else is cool is that they were all bad guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. none of the heroes They're like started Thunderbolts as in heroes. Space. They were jerks, you know yeah. what I mean? And not one of them had that many redeeming qualities, but they were forced to become heroes. And I think a lot of times in, in superhero movies, they take these iconic heroes and turn them into jerks to make them more edgy and make them more whatever. And it's like, that's not what it has to be. You can have a hero, and I thought it was so cool to do it the opposite way, of take these kind of like mm-hmm. down and out criminals and make them better. Watch someone rise to the occasion. I think that's what all superhero stuff should be. It should yeah. inspire you to be better. It's so much easier to relate to a character that that's fallible. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons I kind of have a hard time with Captain America is that in so many ways he's perfect. He's, you know, he's Marvel's answer to Superman. And I just, I can't relate to someone who's so uh, good and so whole. And it's like, you know, for me, it's just, you know, someone like Star-Lord or even Gamora. It's like, you know, they mess up from time to time, but but they're just always but trying to... to you know what might be interesting about hmm. that is that Captain America is the only character in Marvel, for the most part, that, that is a holdover from the Golden Age of comics. And like, that's true. You know, a lot of people uh, say that the biggest issue with DC is that they're like these sort of like these gods that just kind of stand above humanity. Right. And then Stan Lee comes around in the '60s and is like, 
no, let's let's make a teenager with problems. Yeah. And that like all of a sudden we can connect to Spider-Man in a way that we could never connect to the Flash or to Superman or something like that. But Captain America, what you're saying is a holdover from the Golden Age. So I yeah. wonder if there's something there, you know? I love Captain America and I love him as a character. And I when I really started loving him was when I read The Ultimates, which was Mark Millar that was released in like early 2000s. And it was the revamping of the Avengers for today's well, world. I mean, the, the comics are based like at least like the or the movies are based exactly yeah, yeah. there's a yeah. lot like even in the ultimates comic book they talk mm -hmm. about like the like betty ross who's the girlfriend of the whole on and off girlfriend of of bruce banner is their press agent yeah and like she's working press and she's getting them stuff and they start talking about like what are you gonna get us a movie like all right who would play you you know tony who would yeah. play you in whatever and they go around and they're like nick who would play you he's like the one and only Mr. Sam Jackson. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then however many years later, Sam Jackson's cast, well, at, and that's who that And that character was. looked like Sam yeah, Jackson. Exactly. They the, built him comics. off of that, and then here it is. So, But the Ultimates did cap really well. They made him this sort of like 1940s, like true blue, red-blooded mm -hmm. American who's like, hey, you're out of line. I'm going to punch you in the face. And they're like, you can't <laughs> punch people. Stop punching people in the face. Captain's like, no, it was wrong. It was wrong. I'm going like, to punch him. He was him. this awesome, like, you know, man out of time and, and all that stuff. So, you know, I think I agree with what yeah. you're saying, but I think when it's done well, it, yeah. it, it's, it is. You need yeah, that Yeah, unfortunately, sort of... I kind of gave up on the Ultimates because so I was following Ultimate X-Men for a while and then, then they brought in the Fenris twins and they brought in the Shi'ar. It was just too much for me. I, did the, I only did the I first four up. arcs. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so in, in more uh, Guardians news, it looks like we might see a Guardians and Avengers crossover come the third movie. Um, there's a Russell site, PW Mania, that is reporting that Batista, who played Drax the Destroyer, has been in closed door talks to reprise his role in a very heavy way in A3, which would make total sense because they are totally building to an infini Infinity Gauntlet film. We've seen enough with the, the Stingers and the Teasers with Thanos being one of the big bads. And that being said, Guardians 2 could really tackle, tackle Thanos, but I, I feel that this is going to be one of the first big crossovers that we're getting. So, um, and from you know what I've heard from some other inside sources is Batista, you know, really kind of wants he wants out. He wants more of that Hollywood action. You know, we see how well it's doing for Dwayne the Rock Johnson, who I, I love him so much and so <laughs> proud of him. It's hard to um, not love him. Yeah, it's I so think. hard not yeah. to. So, and I think I really am excited to see a, a bigger Drax presence in Avengers three, and I'd love to see how they're going to meld those two properties together yeah i mean the idea of seeing those guys on screen together like in the first avengers film when yeah. it's cap iron man and thor and they land and they're in the woods and they, you and see they all, three of them at the same time, time. Mm -hmm. before they even fight there's just that moment and i remember being in the theater and being like oh my god it's them you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. that idea of like yeah. seeing more heroes at the same time and and that idea of those those worlds intersecting is so cool and so exciting and well and i feel they're gonna clash you know because they're they're oh, yeah. so different in, in terms of just their, oh, of course they're gonna you know, clash i don't think yeah. any of the heroes so far in the films have gotten along yeah like, i don't think at any point like, like well no hulk and, and tony because they got sci science bros eventually yeah but he started he was pretty antagonistic yeah, tony stark Tony's Tony Santex. right know, that's him in general i agree yeah yeah. So? Well, I, I also think that uh, them talking to Drax is more like a symptom or uh, maybe symptoms mm -hmm. not the right word, but like they're talking to all of them. I think that yeah. Drax is just the one that we've heard about, mm -hmm. but I would imagine they're talking to all of them. And that's kind of like, yeah. you know, the canary in the mind to say like, hey, look what we're doing. Like we're yeah. talking well, to think, all of them. I think he was really the only one who ha didn't have a, a huge locked in contract because of how controlling WWE is with their oh, characters. So I think, you know, cause we know everyone's pretty much been signed on for Guardians 2. So I think, I think it's just a matter of like, can he get out of what he's doing uh, with WWE right now? So I, I yeah. think that's really the, where it stands. So I'm excited to see what, what comes of that. Cause we should probably yeah. hear some, cause what we're getting Guardians 2 is slated for July 28th in 2017. Yeah. And um, Avengers is an un unset for 2018. So yeah. we got some time. Got a little, got bit, a little of time. bit of time. Got a little bit of time. Yeah. Got a little bit of time. Uh, well, in other news, we've also got uh, Michael Douglas is not going to be wearing the Ant-Man suit. He's playing Hank Pym in the, in the new movie. He will not be putting it on. It's apparently just going to be in the background for him. And then uh, Paul Rudd will be dressing in it as Scott Lang. Yeah. Uh, now, now, can you... Give me some flavor on Scott Lang again. Ant Man's another property I haven't really read a whole lot of. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott Lang is a criminal mm -hmm. uh, who uh, wow. his uh, I know right. So back with the Irre bad boys turning good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he's a he's a uh, he's a criminal who uh, his daughter is sick, and um, I, I think it's something like he can't afford the doctor that he needs to go to, so he turns to a life of crime, and in yeah. order to help him with his life of crime, he steals the Ant Man suit from Hank Pym, who is still an active Avenger. Yeah. You know, he's not like really old like what they're doing in the movie but he uh, goes and steals the suit and then uh, 
you know, Hank Pym is trying to chase him down and everything else. And then it turns out, oh, he's actually a pretty good Ant-Man. So he becomes kind of a second Ant-Man. I think there's a third Ant-Man, but I can't remember his name. I think so. I don't remember, though. He was a like a, a turned shield agent or something like that. I can't think, remember his I name. Don't know. Hey, Anybody? Schmoville, if you know. Schmoville, yeah. if you know. Third Ant-Man. Yeah, hash- third Ant-Man. Yeah. Hashtag us at Marvel News, Marvel fans. Yep. Let us know, please. Yeah, let's start that dialogue. Yeah, I like I like talking to people. I have nothing. I like to get up in the morning and tweet at people. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, and also, along with the Ant Man news, mm-hmm. we've also got Judy Greer is all uh, yes. is in Ant Man. And we were talking earlier. Uh, some people think that she's going to be like a Janet Van Dyne character or something like that. I I personally think they're just going to bring Cheryl Tunt in from Archer to just be part of the Ant Man universe. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. probably what That's it exactly is. what it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I I think that Evangeline Lilly is going to end up being the Wasp. I don't think that. Judy well, yeah, her Greer, haircut is already like. I mean, yeah. she's got that that the total bob. bob. Yeah, it's yeah, so beautiful so, too on her. Yeah, I th- I think I, I don't think that Judy Greer is going to be a superhero as much as yeah. I'd love be. to see it. I would love to I see love, it. I she's just great. I'd love to see where they put yes. her and, and what she would do. I think that'd be so. I don't know. I'd love to see it. What superhero uh, would she be though? I don't know. Silver Surfer. Yeah. <laughs> Let's 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 get that guy going again. Yeah, yeah, well, so that makes me wonder if they're going to bring in Silver Surfer into the Fantastic Four. Well, I, I feel like I, that's a lot. I feel I like if you're going to reboot it yeah. and you're going to reintroduce those characters and all that stuff to to go right to Just, Surfer. That's, why not? But I love the Silver yeah. Surfer. No, I love the Silver mm-hmm. Surfer. But we've already seen like they've got Doom and the. You, are you talking about the most yeah, the, the new, current the, the new, current one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's Doom. Come on, let's just put ten villains in at one movie. Well, it yeah. worked the next three. Yeah. yeah, it works pretty good. Yeah, it's got a great track record. Yeah, and in Spider Man three, when they uh, had like you know forty villains. Yeah, that was only one storyline. You know, the only thing I remember about Spider Man three is how emo Tobey Maguire I was. I it's have all... shut down. Yeah, you brought up Spider Man three, and <laughs> I like, got I'm into done. like panic, like yeah. abused child mode, and I'm like, don't talk about it. Aww. <laughs> I love Spider Man. I have yet to really connect in, to any of the films. Yeah, I think the best, the best. Spider-Man's been done was the cartoon Spectacular Spider-Man. I think that's the best. Was that mid '80s? Uh, no, it was recent. It was oh, no, it, it was a few years ago. Yeah, it was I know, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, they scrapped it yeah. to do Ultimate Spider-Man, which I feel is more of a Deadpool cartoon yeah. than a Spider-Man cartoon. Like, there's the weird like breaks of the fourth wall, the weird like mm-hmm. the, all that stuff. But Spectacular Spider-Man handled the like sacrifice and the heartbreak and and the 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 heroic side of and the quips and stuff like it was just good yeah. and he was smart like every time he beat one of his like iconic villains it was in a new fun way that was like science related and it showed him being a really science brilliant that, yeah that like, sounds like a really good kids cartoon like really it was you know, a great adult cartoon yeah. i loved it uh that's, but it was great for kids too and like i i thought it was that's my favorite incarnation of spider-man so far yeah uh, i think it, it was it was the best yeah i, I do want to watch the web warriors uh ultimate spider-man because they, they we we finally get donald glover as spider-man because they they that's cast awesome. him as the voice for uh, miles morales the ultimate uh, Spider Man. I'm, I'm pretty stoked, and apparently they're bringing in so many different iterations. We get Spider Girl, um, Spider Woman. So I'm really excited to kind of see all those brought how, to how cartoon. bad how bad of a Marvel fan am I if I haven't read any of the Miles Morales stuff? Am uh, I like a pretty bad fan? I mean, it might make you a bad human. Yeah, it's more than wow. any. I mean, <laughs> wow. Why haven't you read it? Yeah. Is the question. <laughs> That's what you just haven't gotten around to it. Or no, I just just haven't gone around. People to are it. upset. Yeah. Are you one of those guys that are upset? No, no, okay. no, not right, at all, right, not at all. Right, like I never, right. I never had anything invested in the Ultimate Universe. I did. I, that was actually when I got back into comics. There was a deal I saw that was like you could subscribe to Ultimate Spider-Man and Ultimate X-Men and get half off both. And when I started to like really start buying comics again, I did that. And I read Ultimate Spider-Man for a long, long time, uh, but I dropped off uh, a while ago, and I haven't picked up the Miles Morales stuff. But now he's in the real universe, yeah. the, the main universe and all that Mar- stuff. The Marvel 616? Yeah, yeah, which is great. Um, What's the ultimate number? I think it's like 1210, right? You're asking the wrong person. I don't know. You're the guy 12, for that. I think I don't it's 1210. Yeah. Marvel 1210. I think it's 12. I can't remember the last number. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I love that uh, he's been brought on to voice him and, and all that. I think that's so great. Yeah. Um, I mean, because the fans, when, when Miles Morales did come about, everyone's like, we want a Donald Glover Spider-Man yeah. movie. And I, I hope, I would love to still see him like live action don that suit. But great. I'm, I'm happy to get that's this. That's a good suit, too. It, yeah. It's a great Morales one. It is. is a great 
a great Spider-Man. There's been yeah. some bad ones. Yeah. But yeah. that's, I like that no, one. That, actually, is a, that is a good one. Yeah, I was really excited. I just got a, so I also, in my free time, I do this crazy thing called cosplay, which means I make costumes and dress costume up as Costume play. Yeah, costume play. But uh, I also sometimes do commissions and I just uh, actually got a girl who wants to do a gender bend uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, so I'm cool. doing like a female version of the Mo- Miles Morales costume for her. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and she's like fierce and beautiful and I'm like, you gotta get some shots with your mask off because she is just gorgeous. Yeah. So I always get upset when I'm on Hollywood Boulevard and I see the Spider-Men walking around with their masks off. Yeah, and I'm like, they're either, breaking the either, illusion. Either, either you're yeah. into it or you're not into it, but don't, yeah. you know. Yeah. But you know, just, like a just, a bit. just pull, like, yeah, pull a little bit off. Get that, get, get, get that kiss shot. Come on, I get we it. We can do it. Yeah. I mean, put a yeah. trench coat on if you're going to take the. Yeah, just do yeah. so. But I yeah. was like, mm, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. That's not what Peter would do. It's <laughs> <laughs> true, though. Uh, so other uh, some news that Stan Lee dropped on us at um, Fan Canada Expo uh, the other week. It looks like a Black Panther film is in the works. Like more or less, um, con- like, like, like confirmed. not confirmed, yeah, but not like, confirmed by Marvel Studios, but Stanley. So, so the actual. I mean, if Stan the Man says uh, yeah, it. Yeah, if Stan the Man says it. So we, it, it's been strongly hinted at that Black Panther will be making an appearance in Avengers Two. There's been uh, some filming locations down in South Africa. It's the first place they filmed. Yeah, so it, it's it's you know what we would assume. So for those of you uh, in the uh, Schmoesville nation who doesn't don't know who Black Panther is, uh, he is the King of Wakanda, which is a uh, fictional country mm-hmm. in Africa and um, he's also the former husband of X-Men Storm mm-hmm. uh, but yeah he's he's really that awesome that didn't last very long it didn't no, no sadly a- AVX destroyed no that no relationship does I know you Co- can't you Peter can't. and Mary dude Let's we'll we'll table that for another yeah. time. I, I have a lot of opinions about that. But yeah, yeah so um, it looks like uh, so Stan during a panel where he's just kind of talking about his whole you know involvement with comics. He he was responding to a question that was about would there ever be a Black Widow standalone film? And he says um, they're already working on Ant Man, Doctor Strange, and the Black Panther Panther movie. Uh, and there are others I'm not allowed to talk about. So he just kind of threw that in there, and none of us have ever heard any like peep about this. I would like to point out she almost had Black Panther. Yeah, Panther. And I would love to see a Black Panther. <laughs> Sorry. Someone so, just runs around dancing people. So for those of also you who don't follow me on Twitter, I actually had a concussion two weeks ago, so the fact yeah. that I'm like up and around and able to talk, because I was having some of that, you know that great thing when you get hit on the head and you flop words? Great thing. Yeah, it's, it's a, a wonderful great thing. thing. <laughs> By great, I mean terrible, but yeah. it's really good for comedy when you are saying, hey, really, I, I need the fish to my keys so I can go get my tuna and I'm like what and my boyfriend's like what are you talking about I'm like oh I meant I wanted to go get some sushi can I have my car keys no you're not allowed to have your car <laughs> no, keys no. that's what that yeah. answer no. that but is yeah, no. so, no. so I do apologize Loosen I'm those still headphones not there too. I know <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, so Black Panther, yes. Yeah, I'm pretty Back excited. Track. I know. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty, pretty stoked uh, to see that happen because he's such a dynamic character. I don't, yeah. you know. And uh, earlier this morning, I got on Twitter and I asked our fans uh, for some fan casting if who they'd like to see as Black Panther. And we got some really great responses. Yeah. Uh, I think one of my favorite was from uh, Gregory Dickens suggested Idris Elba. Yes. Who I am in love with, Idris Elba, and I just want him in everything, even though technically he was already in a Thor movie, but he had, he was He's covered. So good. Yeah, we wouldn't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. You don't like him? No, no. I, lo- I love Idris Elba. I think he's amazing. Like, he was... You he, don't like him? No, I do. He was great in Pacific Rim, and he was great in Thor, but, like, I don't... Well, who like, would you like to see as Black Panther? Uh, yeah. I personally would like to see, um, I can never say his name, but uh, she, w- she would tell Ejia for. Yeah. Like that guy would be amazing. That would be awesome. Like I've been in love with him since he was in Serenity. Like, yeah, so good. Uh, and we had a we had a few people um, suggest uh, suggest him on this on this uh, str- uh, the string here. Yep. Uh, Freddy Freddy Conception uh, suggested him. Mladen Kulik, I believe I said your name correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you suggested that, and uh, I agree with you guys. And it's so cool. I mean, both of those guys are are, are kind of huge, and and I think that's where this stuff is going. I mean, I think mm-hmm. as soon as they got Robert Downey Jr. on as Iron Man, it changed, Just changed the, the legitimacy game, yeah. of this whole thing. And I think it's gotten only better since then. Like Al Pacino saw Guardians of the Galaxy and he's like, yeah, I would do one of those movies. And it's like, that's great. That's so Speaking exciting. of, speaking of, who would Al Pacino I play? I love that idea. We were talking about that. Yeah. I don't know. Can, can I just, can I throw one out? I would love to see him play Kang. Kang oh. the Conqueror. Oh. Right? Like with that the purple face and like the weird, like, I'm Kang the Conqueror. I don't yeah. know. I do a terrible Al Pacino. We were saying I'm okay. Kang the Conqueror. I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty good, is it? Yeah, yeah you're you're sweet. You're uh, sweet. Sometimes, Thanks, Cook. Thanks. when you earn it. 
yeah, I don't know. Pacino. You, we were saying Cosmo. As oh, the Cosmo as the voice of Cosmo? So fun. The, the, the dog. Yeah. From yeah, yeah, the yeah. dog. Yeah. I want to see him a little bit more than that. Though. Who made a cameo in Guardians? Yeah. 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 He just uh, didn't talk. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But I love that. I love that idea that these that these massive actors are being brought on to portray yeah. these well, massive characters. So I think it's the way to do it. One of the things I was reading about the Ant-Man Michael Douglas thing is is he Douglas kind of even said, he's like, yeah, so I don't really understand this. Like, there was a, a disconnect there. So, I, you know, but it was the same for Chris Evans when they brought him in as Captain America. There were some reports where he wasn't super thrilled. But now, I mean, that man loves that role. So, right. so I'm hoping, you know, Douglas... Being in the film will change kind of some of his uh, his mindset about it because some of the reports where like I think it was MTV sat down and interviewed him and he was like yeah so I'm not really familiar with the the material yeah. and doesn't quite understand it so, so uh, but just going back to Black Panther like um, just as a character since part of our uh, show's idea is to educate the fans who may not know who these people are mm-hmm. and stuff like that uh, Black Panther. Uh, many people uh, may not be familiar with him. His name is T'Challa, right? Mm-hmm. Is it T'Challa or T'Kala? I've always said T'Challa. I say T'Challa. I say That's T'Challa, I say, too. Yeah. yeah, T'Challa. All right. Uh, uh, T'Challa, and he is the uh, the king, as you mm-hmm. said, of, of uh, Wakanda. Wakanda, where they uh, the only nation on the entire uh, earth where you can mine vibranium. That's right. Uh, which is a more, uh, a, a more dense... And better uh, material than adamantium, which yeah. is what yeah. Wolverine's it's, it's bones. It's indestructible. Well, it absorbs all vibrations. It's what Cap's shield is made out and of. And what Tony Stark's arc reactor in the films is made out of. They've yeah, because he that. discovers that yeah. that element. Mm-hmm. So, but like it in Wakanda, it exists naturally. Yeah, at least in the comics. And so Wakanda's we'll see where like they this go with sovereign it. nation with incredible technology that's hidden deep within. Yeah. Uh, uh, the depths of Africa and it, it's cloaked and and it's all this stuff. It's cloaked like m- most other nations don't even know it exists yeah. because of their technology. Yeah, yeah. Black Panther is, is one of the most technologically and well, T'Challa is just he's up there with Tony and yeah, he's brilliant. You know, and um, blanking on uh, the Fantastic Four, Reed, Reed Richards. Richards. Reed Richards. Yeah, I try to always forget him. Yeah, Not in touch. No, sorry, it's okay. I just try. I try to blank him out of my mind. Uh, <laughs> he's just just an absolute super genius, and it's great what yeah. he's done for you know. But he's, he's just, they, don't, they don't talk about him a lot in the comics. Yeah. Like, no. he's, he, he doesn't no. have a giant presence, which, mm-hmm. is, which is unfortunate. But he's also like, he's very much like Captain America, like in his power set. Yeah. Right? Like he's super agile, super fast. Yeah. And a lot of that comes from his suit. Yeah. It's yeah. like uh, it, the, the, the mantle of the Black Panthers passed down mm-hmm. uh, from generations as the guardian of Wakanda. Yeah. And uh, he's got a lot of different things that he can do like uh he's got yeah. vibranium tipped claws and stuff like that and he's actually handled really well and a really cool character in uh the cartoon uh avengers, avengers earth's mightiest, mightiest heroes. heroes yeah yeah which is a great i mean those so the dynamics good. in that show are, are that's another that one that was, got that scrapped was, for another reboot and it, yeah. it's, it's on netflix right now you guys should watch it it's, yeah. it's one of my two favorites. seasons and it's, it's the amazing. same guys who it's did amazing. spectacular spider-man oh, oh really to, yeah that's why oh. it's it's great. It's it's a good show. It's a good cartoon. But uh, Black but, yeah. Panther's really cool. He's a really cool character. There's a lot to go in with, and uh, I'd love to see what they could do. Yeah. And also, I'd love to see Wakanda on film. That yeah. would that would be so beautiful. Cool. Yeah. It's like an Asgardian level mm-hmm. like city of, of yeah. beauty, or more than a city. And, and now, and uh, one of the other people, I can't um can't find him here. One of our other sh- uh, Schmovillians <laughs> suggested. Um, uh, the girl from uh, Walking Dead, Michonne. Oh yeah. And, uh, and Lupita. Lupita, who played from, from uh, uh, 20 years 12, of, Twelve, 12 years, years of Slave. Yeah, Twelve Years of Slave. Yeah. Oh my gosh! If they did uh, like a daughter. Like, that would yeah, like the daughter of the Black Panther, kind of like what they're doing with uh, the Hank Pym and mm-hmm. Ant Man and Ant Man and everything. Ant Man. Ant Man. Ant Man. Ant Man. Ant Man. Uh, uh, that would be really cool. That would be very cool, yeah. like to see like a female Black Panther, like the daughter of the Black Panther, or well, like the Queen of Wakanda. I mean, like, there, that would be yeah, cool. Yeah, th- there's been a huge push, especially from uh, you know not just the female fans, but from from the fans in general to see more female characters displayed on on screen. I mean, Black Widow has done wonderful for all the films that she's been in, and there's been a, a large cry for a, a solo Black Widow film. But it, I mean, Marvel still hasn't really given us like. You know, a single strong female lead. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the, the the you know everyone's crying for uh, Ms. Marvel there um, to get her film. But I think you know it'd be great to even see some of the the gender bending role reversals, even yeah. if they don't make the main Black Panther a female, but to bring in you know like you like you and our fans suggested, you know, a daughter of as a more prominent role would be great. Because, I'd love to see that. Yeah, and I especially would, with Black Panther. I don't think there's an easier way no. to do it than have her coming in and being like, I don't care about you dudes. Yeah. I care about my 
country. I care about Wakanda. I care about my people. So get your heads together because mm-hmm. we have to stop this or yeah. whatever, you know? And then these guys that we know so well be like, oh, God, who is she, you know? And Tony Stark making a move and Pepper being like, stop. <laughs> It'd be great. <laughs> You've already written Dude, it. Yeah, Mar- you've already yeah, written it. I did. I've written a lot. I actually have the scripts here if you guys want to see them. Oh, yeah. Let's oh, okay, see them quick. Thanks. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we all want Katie Sackhoff, I think, as Captain Marvel. Yeah. I mean, That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Done. I know. I, I actually believe it was on the Schmozmo, uh, Schmozno movie show that they first announced the uh, that rumor. They started that whole rumor train. So mm-hmm. pretty uh, pretty impressive to come full circle there. But I, I don't know. I'd like to see Katie Sackhoff. I kind of feel like she is that role. Um, some of our fans have, have put some other suggestions uh, forth, um, but mostly it's all uh, Katie Sackhoff. Oh, Emily Blunt was one of the ones that someone fan casted, uh, yeah. which I could, I could see. Um, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm pretty much on the Sackhoff. Uh, and and uh, e- e- uh, Yvonne Stravinsky, who was in Chuck, I believe. Yes. Yeah, right. I've yeah. only seen the first season of that. She was great in it. Yeah. I don't, also, I don't see her as Captain Marvel. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean her any offense. I don't no. know her. I'm sure she's a nice lady, but no, it's just you know. I see Katie Sackhoff. Yeah, I mean, like, she that that character pretty much was Starbuck and Battlestar, and you know, yeah. I don't know if anyone watched the uh, latest Riddick movie, but she played a really similar. Katie Katie VA. Sackhoff has already played Captain Marvel. Yeah. Right. She just hasn't been named Captain Marvel yet. Mm-hmm. That's that's my opinion. It's on the table. Yeah. We're just, just there you saying. go. There it is. Yeah. Uh, in other <laughs> casting rumors, uh, they can't seem to settle on a Doctor Strange. No, uh, can I? Okay, here's my opinion. Uh, here's uh, my opinion. Okay. On, come on, come on. Here's my. I love it. Here's my opinion on Doctor Strange. I think they've already cast him. Benedict I, Cumberbatch. No, I don't think it's going to be Benedict <laughs> as much as I would love to see that. Uh, I think they've already cast him, and I think they're going to. They're holding out to announce it at New York Comic Con in October. Okay, I mean, because okay, they like to, yeah. they love to like yeah, Marvel sense. loves to make those no. announcements at the big conventions, and, well, and that's New York is their home. Let's like, just be honest; we did not get any good Marvel news out of San Diego Comic Con this year. I mean, we didn't get any good Marvel news, but yeah, I was at the panel and I did get to see the uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron trailer, no, and, it, and that, that was awesome. awesome. But you that would was think, awesome. You would think at San Diego, which is the premier, you know, for all the the movie and TV news, they would have dropped a like something, and we didn't get that. But I think it's because, like you said, they're trying to elevate New. York's Comic Con, which is not in relation. It's actually owned by a completely different company. From oh wow, yeah, uh, Reed Pop owns New York Comic Con, and um, Comic Con International owns San Diego and WonderCon here on the West Coast. So I think it's WonderCon. Um, yeah. So yeah. as as the leading Doctor Strange fan, because there's only like four of you. Guys, there's only four of us guys. Uh, yeah. Who would you like to see? Uh, since I don't think it's going to be Benedict. As who much would you as, like to God. see? I would love to see Benedict Cumberbatch. Really? Scream out, by the hoary hosts of Hoggeth. I would kill to see that. You don't, why are you wrinkling your face? You don't want to see that? I am like the most anti uh, Bennett BC girl. You're like the only girl on the entire face of the planet who is I, that's not okay. all I about. That's okay. I also am not in love with Tom Hiddleston, so. You just lost like half of you our female out. fan base. What are you, you doing? Get I love Loki out. and I love Tom Hiddleston as Loki, but I don't feel that. Benedict Cumberbatch needs to be in every film ever. Did you ever read? I agree with that. I don't yeah. like when people get oversaturated. No, yeah. I, I agree with that. I agree mm-hmm. with that. I just think that he would be a great Doctor Strange. I don't. I think, I it's think just he cause... would be, but I think with Sherlock and stuff, I've I know I have a better yeah. idea of what his Strange would be, and I I mm-hmm. feel like I maybe have seen that movie. Yeah, you know what I mean with That's his fair. stuff. Yeah. That's fair. I love I him. I think he's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, but I think he's the most on the nose option. Uh, I can see that also, which is a great. It's a great casting, but I don't know if that's what they're going to go with. No, they've, they've got to get a weird guy. Well, two, two just, weeks ago, it's just too, he's too weird of a character to be like a straight. Yeah, guy. You yeah. know, like, I mean, I don't know Strange like you know Strange, but I love the the he the bravado of you know what I mean. Like, yeah. it's such an interesting like, and it's such a he's, I, he's always felt like a really lonely character to me. Like mm-hmm. he's alone in his study he with is. his helper, and like he's you he's know, only got Wong. That's yeah. all he's got, and maybe I, Clea, depending on which one, which comic you're reading. Yeah, I don't know. I. What do you so, got? Well, I was going to say, well, a couple of weeks ago, they were floating Joaquin Phoenix as a name. And now, you know, rumors as they have, they come and, come and go. So what do you know about that? I mean, I feel well, like. I, mean, I don't I don't know anything else. Well, I mean, your what, feelings. Like, what do you. What, what are my feelings yeah. on it? Um, uh, I went and watched Master uh, based on Cook's suggestion because uh, I wasn't convinced about Joaquin. But having watched Master, uh, Joaquin would be good. He would be amazing. That's what I. I he would be amazing. I love that idea because I have no idea what that movie would be. Yeah. So I would love to see him take on the Sorcerer Supreme. And, and I, I think that'd be fascinating. And I, I think if it's handled well. Because that guy can play quiet and he can play quirky and weird and yeah. loud. And 
he's great and he's another one of those like monster actors like mm-hmm. one of those guys that like so talented and so deep like i would love to see what he did with this and i think that's what characters like this need is is that sort of yeah they, they need to be brought to life and like you know dr strange is like he's this jerk of a surgeon in the beginning you know who like has all the money in the world and he's just like a total jerk and then uh he goes and finds um you know zen and uh, becomes a sorcerer supreme so like he's got to go from like i'm a jerk to oh um you yeah. know and like peaceful meditation and it's not an easy ride it's a no bumpy it's, a, ride it's an awful there. ride yeah. it's an awful ride which is uh, exciting but hmm. then like after he reaches that that place of tranquility he has to start killing demons yeah. <laughs> like that's crazy so like how do you act that you've got to have a master actor be able to pull that off and uh i think joaquin would be amazing at it yeah, I love that. I mean, I'm. Yeah, I just want him to make good movies. Yeah, I want I want the the movie to be I, good. I I, I, I want to see like Walk- a good I Doctor s- Strange movie. That's would crazy. Be the most incredible thing. Like like with all of that stuff going on and like like I, how are they? They're going to other dimensions. Yeah. Like I mean, like how are they going to do that? Like I don't know. Oh my, it, 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 Schmozville! If you haven't read like the first like twenty issues of Doctor Strange, starting with Strange Tales one ten, moving forward from there. Do yourself a favor. Go take a look at that stuff. Jack Kirby does the art. It is crazy. It is crazy to think that they would put anything like that on film. It's also like Doctor Strange. Is it, you know what I mean? Like I just the it's, name yeah. alone is like. Well, it's the same thing with Guardians. It's like who would have thought that they'd put this on the big screen? Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. I'm 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 excited to see it. Like I like I said, I was I was throwing some shade when I was like, Guardians, really? This is gonna be a thing? And you know, Marvel proved me right because you know, I it's I guess I just need to learn to have faith in Marvel because I get so disappointed by say like the X-Men movies, or I don't know. I'm excited for the new Fantastic Four. I think it's going to, it's a huge divergent from the other, you know, the, the previous film that they're rebooting, but I really, really think it's going to be a good film. So I'm going to, I'm going to put my trust there. But then again, Sony's also let me down with that second reboot of the Spider-Man one, yep. which I finally did go and watch it. Cause even though everyone's like, don't go watch it, Meredith. And I did. And I was like, I'm really, really disappointed about yeah. that. So um, I think, I think Marvel's onto something. I think the, their key with them is that they, they get people who are passionate about it. You know, when, um, when Cap 2, the, the directors were announced for that, my roommate, who absolutely hates Community, was like, this is going to be the worst movie. I can't believe that they have these guys direct, you know, writing, directing it. And, and it's her favorite of the Marvel films because because Winter Soldier is her favorite arc in uh, well, all of... it's yeah, a fantastic it arc in the comics. Um, so I think, I think Marvel's really, you know, now that they, they kind of have the freedom, I think really having Disney own them now has really helped give them the the resources they need to go out and really create these beautiful stories. So I think, you know, bringing in Doctor Strange, you know, what other, what do you think other weird properties like Marvel can bring in, like unknown, you know? Well, they, they're talking about the Inhumans, which is yeah. like, I mean, that would be Marvel's answer to the X-Men and having mutants because they don't, they don't have the rights to that since like, yeah. Fox has that stuff. Like That would be a wacky property to bring in too. Yeah. Especially because, like, they've got, like, they're related to the Kree, and the Kree, like, came to Earth and tried to seed the Earth, like, before humanity but was I don't, ever born. I don't think and they, can, that, we, they can't use Kree, can they? Cause no, no, the oh, Kree is, Marvel no, can use Kree. Marvel, Marvel can use Kree, yeah. yeah. Okay. So for those Schmozvilles that yeah. don't know, uh, the Inhumans are a race of super beings that live on the dark side of the moon in Adelan. Adelan, is their, yeah. Is their, is their home. And, but they originated uh, on Earth. Yeah, and yeah. they went there to escape and, and to, to create their own land where they could be free and... Uh, and they're just a bunch of. I mean, they're mutants. They yeah, really they're are just like a bunch of like incredibly visual like mutants. Like mm-hmm. they're 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 every shape and size and power set and all that stuff. So like Black Bolt, their king can't talk because just a whisper will blow up a city. Like yeah. his the power the, he's the like yeah with the, he, with the whisper. It's, and Karnak is his like advisor, and he has yeah, the power. Karnak's a little dude with a goatee and a big head <laughs> and a giant head, and he can spot any weakness. Like that's his that's his, his pow- mutant ability. And when you hear that, you're like, "Why? Wow, what would that guy do?" But like, yeah. then he's like, "I can see your weakness," and then he murders you, Flicks. like with yeah. a flick of his finger. Yeah, and you're like, "Ah, I'm a kidney," <laughs> and you had Kidneys. a weak kidney, yeah. and you yeah. didn't know it. You but had Karnak no idea, did. but Karnak he knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He found it. Oh, uh, that'd be real cool. That'd be a crazy, crazy looking movie, and I think it could be really fun black bolt tough character to get on film yeah. yeah i mean but they've done cool, it though. they've done it with i mean they did rocket they did groot they, yeah, but they, yeah. can they did thanos the idea of like black bolt you're just gonna have like black bolt would be thanos he'd just be sitting in his throne and be like just looking intense all the time 
Because when he talks, he kills people. Mm -hmm. People die when he talks. Yeah. By the power of his voice. It's exciting. It's amazing. I know. I'm also, uh, you know, something too that, uh, again, super, super unknown property that's coming out soon uh, Big Hero 6, uh, Disney's first. Uh, Marvel property that they're animating with, uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. I don't know if you guys ever read the little mini series from I back in the day. It. Never really, read it. Really cute. It centers on you know a young boy in the uh, in you know who who creates a robot, uh, a health robot, and then forms his own like superhero team. Basically, it's kind of anime ish, but it's going to be really really adorable. I actually got to go do the uh, press day uh, at oh, at cool. Disney Animation Studios for it, and I, I got to see some behind the scenes stuff, and I'm so stoked to see it because the world that they've built for uh, San Francisco, which is uh, San Francisco and Tokyo, Tokyo melded combined. together, yep. it's beautiful. One of the most immersive uh, cinematic worlds I've ever seen done in computer animation, and really? Disney's really like uh, some of the stuff they've done. They've upped the bar. They've created some new software for all the rendering just the, the light points that they're bringing in is absolutely phenomenal so i think uh you know if you guys haven't really heard a lot about big hero six out there while it's not uh put out by marvel it's gonna be put out by disney but it's you know they were given the the director like here go pick something from the marvel vault that you want to create and it's and there's a teaser for it out right yeah now, there's right? So, there's yeah. two there's it's two amazing. yeah there's two Looks teasers good. it's great the the main uh you know robot's name is baymax and he's this huge inflatable uh you know medical robot and they build a suit of armor for him and it's you know one of the other things i was really fascinated to learn in terms of disney is that um it's their largest animated cast ever they had to like in addition to the six main characters they also have their superhero form so you have like essentially plus the bad guys plus the the some of the side characters i want to say there's like 17 fully animated cast members that's awesome wow it's gonna be really really phenomenal and um, again, I, some of the stuff they've done, it's, you know, obviously a kid's movie, but it's aimed at for adults to enjoy. So yeah. I'm pretty I'm pretty excited to see that come alive. Yeah. Well, uh, Schmoville, what do you think? Uh, what mar- uh, what strange Marvel properties would you like to see? Continue telling us, telling us your fan casting for uh, Black Widow or Captain Marvel or Black Doctor Panther. Strange yeah. or who? Black Panther. Black Panther. Or Black Panther. Uh, and uh, uh, that's that's been our show. You can follow me on uh, at the Matt Key. Yeah, I'm at M Placo. I don't have a cool name, just M P L A C K O. And I'm at Matt Cook Tweeted. Yeah. Check that out. I know. Out. Wow. At Matt Cook Tweeted. Yeah. Huh? Uh, and also continue to uh, to go to the Schmoes uh, Schmoes No website. Uh, continue to go to the, our iTunes page and comment uh, comment there on what you like, what uh, and everything. If you like our show, yeah, yeah, and please let us know what rate you want us. us to talk about. What do you want to hear? What do you mm-hmm. want us to dig into? What do you want us to scoop? Yeah, we are we are fans for you guys. We're just gonna sit here and talk about the things we love or don't love. Ooh, ooh. ooh. Yeah. So so keep in touch, Schmoville. We'll see you next week. From producers Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, and the entire Schmoes No Network crew, we'd like to thank you for listening to Marvel News from Marvel fans. To join the conversation, find them on Facebook and subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Special thanks to Kevin Undergaro and Maria Menounos, the author of Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness in Stores Now. And be sure to subscribe to the YouTube Schmoes No Podcast channel at Schmoes No Podcast. 